Can Oklahoma State beat Arkansas? What about a Houston upset over Oklahoma? Is Baylor and Utah interesting now? Let's get the Big 12 squad together. You're talking ball with the Big 12 squad. From Oklahoma State to Utah, from Kansas State to BYU, from Houston to Texas Tech, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big 12 weekend. Buckle up. It's the Big 12 squad, and we have a seat for you. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up. You're part of the Big 12 squad. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome into a special edition of Locked On Big 12 and Locked On. Everybody in the Big 12, we get the squad together tonight to talk about last week's conference wins, losses, and this week's heartbreak or triumph that is to come. Um, You know, first and foremost, thank you for making these shows your first listen every single day across the family of Big 12 shows of the Locked On Podcast Network. Second and second most, Casey Cowan of Locked On Texas Tech. What the hell was that? Yeah, what do you want to know? Um, <laughs> I, it's, it's. Um, I believe you know, to his question, he would like to know what that was. Uh, well, that I think, was I the think gutsiest, Casey's question summed it up. Yeah, that's the gutsiest <laughs> win anybody had in America. It takes a hell of a yeah. lot to come out as a 32-point favorite and win as a uh, one-point walk-off. So, Baron Did you Martin see what happened in Eugene? Right? Wait, wait. Baron Morton is from Abilene. Have we have we checked if there's anything under the table going on there, right? Books are cut. Books are cut. <laughs> With the former Texas Tech quarterback? I mean, oh. Yeah, speaking of crossovers, which I know is a locked on staple, there was a lot of crossover within that ball game. There was a lot of chip on the shoulders within that ball game, but I don't know how any of that justifies a 51 from a Big 12 defense, even if it was Tech's defense against an FCS opponent. We've got, of course, a conversation playing out in the 806, as you would anticipate, <laughs> following a result like that. Conspiracy theories running wild. The numbers on the jerseys are so big, they make Tech look and play small. Evelyn Christian has got defensive signals, yada, yada, yada. So it's been a lot of fun in West Texas, man. I'm glad yeah, you could kick I, it uh, off with a question for me. You get the, the Tyler Shuck comments earlier in the week and you're about how Texas Tech smells bad and everyone's like, oh, we're going to show them. I think we're on the hunt for an Abilene Christian, locked on Abilene Christian host. If you're out there, you're a big ACU <laughs> fan, they have risen to prominence. It's not going to be me. Football. That's all I'm going to say. It's not It's not going to be me. You won't be getting you locked on Abilene Christian out of me. First call, Spencer. Certainly my first call. Um, yeah. Another guy. So for Oklahoma State, a big win. Kansas, I mean, you, you blow all three of you guys from Locked On Utes to Oklahoma State to Kansas. And even Jay Catch of Locked On BYU Cougars. You guys uh, all got big wins. You, Kevin Borba. Bup, 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 bup. Colorado barely beat an FCS team, which we all kind of wanted because that's a pretty good FCS team. Yeah, I think Colorado had no winning going into that game regardless. Um, they lose the game. They're made a mockery of. They win the game by a lot. Everyone's like, it's an FCS team. And then they just win the game as closely like they did. And people still say that. So at the end of the day, all that really matters is they have a one in the win column and a, a zero in the loss column at the moment. And so uh, you kind of got to feel themselves out and figure things out with a brand new roster. They brought in almost 50 new people again. And so the Colorado Madness lives for another week, right? And, and here's, here's okay, hold on, Kevin. Yeah. Here's the genius of playing that game on a Thursday. Is you get to enjoy being an undefeated football team for an extra two days before you go to Nebraska and a proper college football team is indeed going to beat the Buffs this Saturday. I mean, am I the only one that thought they were like the same team that in the game that we saw? Like, it's like Shooter um, Sanders is going to make some incredible plays. Receivers, Travis Hunter is going to do incredible things. Line is going to give up some pass rush. He's going to get smacked back there, and well, then the defense is going to get some stuff. Only right? one smack compared to like seven a game last year. Let's yeah, props like you can't. The the offense line was way better. Um, I think it's hard to compare to last year because. You throw in five of us last year, and we'd probably get a pass rush on Shador Sanders last year. But this year, the line's a whole lot better. Um, North Dakota State has a, a lot of good players, and I think a lot of people were discrediting them. Not to say that the game should have been that close, but I think that's more on Colorado not knowing how to manage a game like I know how to manage like my funds when I'm deciding when to eat out during the week. It also might have something to do with the interception thrown in the end zone thanks to the, uh, what was it again? Oh yes, the guy falling down and having his foot go up into the air for an otherwise well-thrown football. I, I, I don't think that North Dakota State game was actually as close as the final score indicated. I'm with you, Kevin, on the game management, clock management issues. But to your question, Derek, a lot of people do think Colorado is the same. I did not. I thought they were better than last year. 
that's just a low bar. While we're talking yeah. about FCS teams in general, really quick, I just want to say, Cody, this I'm guy, happy you took care 49 of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, I'm happy that you guys took care of business against South Dakota State because we all know last year what happened when you guys played a school that started with South, that being South Alabama, that didn't exactly go in your guys' favor. So I was happy for you guys to start off on a better note this year. So you're going to go there immediately when I'm, I was going to say I'm rooting for Utah and I was going to feel sorry for Baylor this too. week. Oh, my goodness. I want goodness you guys to win. JT, JT wants the smoke. Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. Jeez. I hope we're undefeated um, by the time JT, we play each other. I want that to be as prime time of a matchup as it can be. And I do think that Utah's I, taking this against Baylor. We can talk about that in a second, too. I know Utah is new to the conference and the fans have been very um, alive and passionate. But when we say nice things to people, we usually don't bring up when they lost to South Alabama last <laughs> season. We try to keep compliments pretty. I know Utah likes to, do, to dig at people. Drake, uh, this might be guys. a Pac-12 thing. They call it a backhanded oh. compliment. Yeah, uh, that's that West Coast stuff. Uh, before we move on into actual breakdowns from not just last weekend, but going into this weekend, I want to uh, I don't want to bury the lead. We're going to go through score predictions for some of the biggest games this weekend. Quickly, guys, JT Westersill, give me your prediction of Utah and Baylor before we break it down. I think Utah is going to win it. I'll go 36 to 17 right now. Mm, Kevin Borba, Colorado gets Nebraska this week. Yeah, 35-28, favor the Buffs. Oh, the Buffs are going to win it. Let's see. Jake Hatch, uh, BYU, has a big matchup on Friday with SMU. I've got a, actually a good feeling about this thing. BYU squeaks it out 31-28. Mmm, Casey Cowan, Texas Tech, headed up the Pacific Northwest against Washington State. Uh, Joey McGuire, three and eight on the road so far. I'm going to say Washington State, 92, Texas Tech, 76. <laughs> <laughs> A shootout, though. Mark Bet the over. Taj Brooks, seven <laughs> touchdowns for Taj Brooks. Uh, Cody Stoball for Oklahoma State. You've got Arkansas, another big game. Yeah, I mean, they're obviously improved. I'd say like 38, 31. Mm, 38 31 for Cowboys and Derek Johnson locked on Jayhawks. You also have a power four game against Illinois on the road. Yeah. Give me Kansas 31 27. I I don't totally know how Kansas is going to tackle the 250 pound running back for Illinois, but that'll be a question we find out. And uh, I think it should be a fun one. They could try wrapping him up and getting him down to the turf with a body part other than his feet or hands. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Low man wins every time. You heard the score predictions, but how are we going to get there? That is up next right here. The Locked On Big 12 Squad's Thursday preview of the Big 12 Conference. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, here's what happens. I get in the college football season. I say I like college football, but I want to add an extra element to it. So I go and say, hey, Texas Tech is a two-point underdog against Washington State on the road. I can go to FanDuel and tell FanDuel that I think that Washington State's going to win that game by two points or more. Or if you're a Tech fan, you can bet on the Red Raiders. You heard us talk all about FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Well, we have something different for you as well. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers get a $5 bet. With a $5 bet, three weeks free a trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV and YouTube. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel anytime. Visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. That is FanDuel.com. Go there today. Jumping into this week in the Big 12 and a ton of big matchups this conference has, um, I'm going to keep myself on the, uh, what are the things called that you jump in the pool with? It kind of balances. A diving board? Diving board. I'm going to keep myself on the diving board before we go all the way in and ask Spencer McLaughlin to give your assessment of last week in the Big 12 conference because I liked what I saw out of a good portion of our teams. Yeah, I I think it was a solid week overall. I am not going to discredit a team that I have talked kind of negatively about all offseason. That's Oklahoma State, because it's the same situation as what what Colorado had. You don't get to tell me whoever you are, random commenters, pundits, whoever, fans out there that going into a game. Oh, you got to watch out for that FCS team. They're really good. You got to watch out for the upset. And then when you blow them out, think just an FCS team, nothing like no, you don't get to have it both Ways I thought Oklahoma State was impressive at home. Interested to see how they go against an Arkansas team in a game that could very well save Sam Pittman's job. He wins that game. He is back into the Sam Pittman is our coach for the entire season. Question mark. Sam Co- Pittman is our coach in in twenty twenty five. So uh, I thought they did solidly across the board. Uh, I actually was not wildly impressed with Utah. I thought Cam Rising was a little bit rusty 
uh, in game one. I think it was important that he got a game uh, against Southern Utah to start. He's going to have to be sharper. Last week, and we're talking about how this is the best offense we'd seen from Southern Utah in forever. And you guys did not do diddly squat against Utah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. I I mentioned a one Cameron rising. What position does he play? He plays quarterback. And and, oh, oh, uh, excuse me, Your Honor. Could you please instruct the witness to stop badgering me as a uh, lead counsel here? Um, this is not because you're a Utah fan. He did and, say and, Cam Rising, which doesn't and, have and to is, do and that. Is, and is and is the quarterback someone that plays defense or offense? That would be the as the one. The quarterback, the the quarterback plays offense. So I didn't have any questions about Utah's defense. They looked as expected. Cam Rising can hit wide open guys on a wheel route. I and wide open uncovered tight ends down the field which was a bold strategy from my Thunderbirds, of course. But I think that going forward, I need to see Cam Rising make higher level throws before I feel as confident in Utah as I did coming into the year as my preseason pick to win the league. Spencer, before Hmm. yesterday, who had played a game more recently, Tom Brady or Cam Rising? The that answer is probably Tom Brady. It's, it's Brady. So he was okay. still for, he still completed 10 of his 15 passes. And yes, he yes hit some open guys, but did a good job diagnosing, finding those open players. A wheel route is not the first read. He was able to identify, hey, this guy's open. Boom, then found him there. The pass to Brant Keithy, several of those, right? That wasn't the first read. Sometimes he was, sometimes he wasn't. So I do. Well, think there was one play where Brant Keithy was the only read. Okay, you two will kiss later. Play there are other games <laughs> in the Big 12. You JT, two will like find you a hotel room. But- Room. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that comparison. I'm just, that comparison. All right, hold on. Jake Hatch has not Wait. said. But Jake, what's going on with you? You're, are you in a what void are you in? Is that the transfer portal? <laughs> are you I in just left the portal left right now? BYU football practice, man. I'm, I'm literally oh standing gosh. outside the BYU practice facility. So <laughs> okay, well, I'll give it to you. What what is your take here, Jake? Well, here's the thing. I've watched Cam Rising for years now. Don't we already know what he is at this Thank point? Thank you. About Spencer wanting to see him be able to throw the ball down the field. We've got multiple years of evidence that he is who he is. They may just have to deal with what he is and allow that to be enough. I, I wasn't that- specifically concern, con, concerned with the downfield passing as I was the high leverage throws, the difficult throws, the accurate tight window ones. He didn't have to make and did not make a single tight window throw the entire game. Didn't complete a lot of passes, but that that's why when in the few times he was under pressure, he struggled. When there weren't wide open receivers, he didn't make the normally accurate passes that we're accustomed to seeing. I'm not saying he's incapable. I'm saying that is a question mark going into the Baylor game. Can he be that sort of guy? One throw in particular, I think it was in the second quarter, maybe. He had Dorian Singer pretty open, mostly clean pocket, and he missed him. And that's not something that you see Cam Rising do very often. That was a question I had coming out of it. I thought he looked pretty good mobility wise, but... I, I, I need to see a little bit more before I'm supremely confident that he's the same guy. I, really quick, I said, every quarterback in the conference at least missed five throws this weekend. I also just want to say that we're talking about five throws is what we're narrowing it down to, but I know we got to get to other posts as well. Two throws can decide a game. Okay, I'm done. Jeez. You two are gone. Done. Um, <laughs> for the rest of us this week, Kevin Borber for Colorado. Give me 30 seconds. We're going to do like a quick little blurb here and then wrap up the show with your looking forward after one game, what we've learned and where our team's going to be. Because I, I do think now, uh, and JT will address this in a second, but I'm going to let you sit on this because you took five minutes of the segment with this little argument over here. Um, I do think Utah, I learned this weekend, will likely lose on the road to Oklahoma State, which I already picked. I already picked. It's not going to be that crazy of a thing. We'll address that. But first, 30 seconds, Borba, why does Colorado win? I think it comes down to the quarterbacks. Dylan Rayola hasn't played anyone yet. He played UTEP, and that's kind of the bottom of the barrel in college football. And so if you ask me who am I more confident, Shador Sanders or Dylan Rayola, I'm going to be confident in Shador Sanders. This Nebraska defense was solid last Borba. year, and Shador pieced him up. Yeah, go ahead. Who was, Stan- who was Stanford's quarterback last year? Ashton Daniels. Yeah, of course. Everybody knew that, right? Um, everybody shakes their head no. I knew that. I, I, I knew absolutely that. not. Yeah. And, well, what does that, and what does that have to do with this, though? Because if it came down to the quarterback every game, Colorado would probably be 12 and 0. <laughs> okay. Maybe, I mean, Borba. This maybe. is the week that it comes down to the quarterback. Um, Realistic. Derek, he's a freshman. He's never played in a game this big. Colorado is going to change things up on defense, and they're a lot better than UTEP. I hate to break it to all the Miners fans out there, but UTEP is probably 133 out of 134 in college football. So yeah, let's be real. Good. It's a very different, very, very different matchup, and he's going to have to try to beat Travis Hunter. So. Derek, uh, Locked on Jayhawks, why will you beat Illinois 30 seconds? 
Well, when you look at it, Illinois doesn't have a lot back on the defensive line. Jerzon Newton, absolute stud. Uh, they lost the law firm, which was the nickname of their two stud D tackles. And even that D line gave up over 200 yards to Neal plus Highshaw last year and wasn't able to get to the quarterback. Um, so I, I think Kansas is going to be able to kind of outscore them in this game. Altmeyer was really good in week one, but he had 14 turnovers last season in the game he played. So uh, Kansas has ball hawking DBs. You go out, maybe force a couple turnovers. Even if you do struggle to stop their run a little bit, I think Kansas can outscore them in what I think will be an exciting game on the road. Cody, why does Oklahoma State win? Because I think their overconfidence from this previous week is going to seep into Stillwater. They had a very good performance, but uh, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff is literally the dead last ranked FCS team in the country. So if we just had a nice performance against the number one team in FCS and they had a very, very good performance against the dead last team, I think their overconfidence is going to allow some of our wide receivers to have some fun. Casey Callen, Texas Tech, oh. uh, you're on the road against Washington State. Why, why do you win, please? <laughs> uh, Washington State's riding too high off of that Portland State shellacking, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, we got our uh, running back on the injury list. He's questionable game time decision. And uh, we just gave everybody memories, a throwback memory to the Lyle Sentence Inch defensive era when Texas Tech was dead last uh, 20 years ago. So why do they win? Hmm, probably something I'm going to have to con continue to consider. Why does Washington State win? Maybe a question <laughs> that'd be a little easier to answer. Yeah, you sit and think on that one, Casey. Think long and hard <laughs> about this week. Uh, Jay Catch, why does BYU beat SMU 30 seconds? I think the biggest thing is BYU has got a lot more discipline than SMU does. The first two games from SMU this season, they've been fairly undisciplined with their overall play. That Nevada game, the Wolfpack should have won. Uh, they gave yeah. it up late in that one. So I, I feel like BYU is the better disciplined team. If they handle their business out there, I think BYU can come away with a victory and allow SMU fans to feel a little worse about themselves after facing the Cougars. Uh, JT, you're still in timeout. I'll answer for you. I think Utah beats <laughs> Baylor because Utah is a significantly better team than Baylor, and they're at home and they never lose at home, and Utah is the best college football team of all time, especially hey, if you ask their fans. On. Coming up. It. Do you still think your team will be undefeated? Let's talk long term after week one on Locked On Big 12's Big 12 Squad Makeover on this Thursday. Beautiful Thursday. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the place to go when you're hiring for your small businesses. If you want to find a professional that's right for your role, LinkedIn Jobs is the place for you to hire faster and for free. Not just a job board, it helps you hire professionals. I've got an intern, the Locked On Big 12 Twitter account, the good tweets from the intern, the bad tweets from me. And luckily, I got a good intern because I used LinkedIn. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't use other job sites as well. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. It's constantly finding ways to make the process easier for you post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply one week under our belt fellas uh we will go in order here of where you are on my screens JT Wister still after what you saw. Look, Cam Rising had not played in a year. I agree with the earlier assessment that he wasn't an elite quarterback on Saturday. Didn't necessarily need to be. If you're looking at a game like Texas Tech had, you need your quarterback to step up and go win you the football game. Rising didn't have to do that. He just had to, to play his role. Do you still think Utah is in a spot to win double-digit games 11-12 even? I absolutely think they are. I mean, what what about last week's performance? Like, regardless of what we think about Utah, like going into the season, like would leave any doubt. Literally, once again, yeah. they defense was fantastic. Injuries. Absolutely shut down. Yes, I mean, that's, that's a good point after what happened last year. Absolutely shut down Southern Utah. Cam Rising wasn't perfect, I guess, if that's what we're, we're doing in this. But he yeah. didn't complete five throws. He took advantage of every mistake that Southern Utah made. So if you want to say, I want to see a little more, I get that. But like to act like it was a concern, I, I just think I don't see the merit for that when you go back and watch his game i thought he looked good i think the weapons at his disposal were impressive and i still feel really good about utah's chances and as most of you on this show know utah also has a very favorable schedule they do not have to play nor go to kansas or kansas state so it's a good team on both sides of the ball and baylor still has a lot of things that they're still trying to figure out mainly getting their quarterback acclimated so i think a win this week and i do expect this utah team to be a double digit win team this fall kevin borba do you feel like colorado is in a spot to go to a bowl game now or to compete at the top of the Big 12. What's your read after one game? I think after one game, I'd, I'd be comfortable with a, a bowl game appearance. Um, I'm not going to make any 
Big 12 proclamations, but they were better against the run defensively, which they were horrendous last year. I think they were in the 120 range, which is for those keeping track at home is not great. Um, and they also had a really good, strong offer offensive performance from their passing attack. And so until someone can stop them and sort of torch the, the defense, then they're just going to be in games. And realistically, they got torched by Cam Miller running the ball. That's North Dakota State's quarterback for those at home. Uh, Dylan Rayola, don't haven't seen him play a lot. Um, I don't think he's the running type. I think he's more of the Mahomes type, as he's frequently compared to, where he just runs around in the pocket. So he's going to have to beat them with their arm, and I don't know if he's able to do that. I feel like a bowl game still feels fair, though. Derek Johnson locked on Jayhawks. I like what I got from Kansas on Saturday. Was it enough to say that they are still a Big 12 championship contender? As long as Jalen Daniels makes it out of the game healthy, the answer is yes, which he did. So the answer does become yes there. Uh, you know, one thing that is going to be interesting to monitor for KU is that defensive line. They lose Austin Booker, who was an all big 12 defensive end last season. And this is three straight years. They've lost their leading sack guy, but they've keep going up with, with kind of the level of player they've brought in. Now they have all these four star recruits. They have their highest recruit they've ever brought in with Deshaun Warner. Who's getting a little bit of playing time who fended off offers from Michigan and Ohio state in, in kind of the fall and winter area to come to KU and they're getting playing time. But are you going to have enough there? Uh, one other thing, though, that I think is interesting as you look along the season, I think uh, for that first conference game at West Virginia, if we're talking about a, a spot that would be a tough win, well, all of a sudden, you know, you see Penn State in week one with Andy Kotelnicki, the former KU offensive coordinator, running very similar things to their offense, run for over 200 yards. Um, Drew Aller had a 98 total QBR. So I think that bodes well for Kansas in that matchup. So, yeah, it kind of comes down to health from this point on. But um, as long as Jalen can stay healthy, it feels like they got the horses to at least be in this race, especially combined with uh, what the schedule turned out their way. Jay Katz locked on Cougars representing BYU. Um, you've got a quarterback now, apparently, and that was a much larger blowout win than I think many expected against SIU last week. Going into this week and long term, do you feel like the Cougars are in a spot to make a bowl game this year? I do think so. I think the goal all along is get to get to that elusive sixth win. They were 5-2 and two a season ago and then had a five-game losing streak. They learned a lot of hard lessons last year, particularly you need a quarterback that can elevate you. Jake Retzloff very much looked the part against Southern Illinois. So, so long as he, similar to what we talked about, if he stays healthy and he continues to perform like he did in that opener, BYU's going to have a fighting chance to get to six wins. I also really think BYU's rushing attack uh, showed some life in that win over Southern Illinois. And that was something they've severely lacked last year. LJ Martin looks like a budding superstar amongst all these Big 12 running backs. Obviously, that kind of headlined this conference, but keep an eye on him. I think he is going to make some noise this year and could be a big reason why BYU, I believe, makes it to a bowl game. Locked on Texas Tech's Casey Cowan. Um, Obviously, 52-51 is not fun. Did did this game indict Texas Tech for the rest of the year? Is this what the Red Raiders are going to be? Uh, I don't think so necessarily because you've gotten off to slow starts under Joey McGuire, still staggered your way to a bowl game. I mean, it's not a high bar to be 6-6, six and six, obviously. Uh, I think you got a lot of youth on the defensive side of the football, though that, again, doesn't justify 51 against Abilene Christian, but they have been finishing a little stronger as far as the year progresses under Joey McGuire. Uh, but man, you can't waste these opportunities early on. I think five of the first seven uh, being played in Lubbock. So even if you don't steal this one on the road necessarily, I still think a chance to get to a bowl game. Uh, but I got to tell you, Texas Tech fans are hoping a lot higher. Yeah, no kidding. That was a uh, tough game, but you got the win. Your 12-0 is still in play for Texas Tech. 12-0 is still in play. Correct. Hey, and by the way, South Alabama, Oklahoma State is on repeat in the LBK. We're looking for some inspiration. Uh, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech don't share a lot of similarities other than a love of the equine and firearms over the last decade. But otherwise, we're looking at a game like that to say it can be done. Sometimes football is just inexplicable, and we're hoping that that was one of those weekends uh, now in the rear view. And for Oklahoma State, 10-point favorites last week, and they got it done by a whole lot more than that, 44-20 to 20 over South Dakota State, which is the best team in the FCS. Cody Stovall, is this a Big 12 championship? Not just caliber team, but is this the Big 12 champion? I mean, we should be. There was nothing that we saw from this previous weekend that would lead us to believe otherwise, other than the fact that I will say there's a difference between double-digit wins and undefeated. Our chances of, of going undefeated took a massive hit because our O-line and D-line did not do enough to equal an undefeated season. But, you know, uh, 10 wins, 11 wins, 12 wins, yeah, definitely still 
a possibility. And I'm sorry to, to break it for you, Casey, but if Taco Reckham Tech is looking for some South Alabama inspiration, that idea ain't worth a velvet paint and the two Dolphins getting it on. It ain't happening this weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, get you some of that. Is that a that. good thing or a bad thing? I don't know what it means. I have no idea what he said either. Yeah, that was. <laughs> exactly. You don't get any exactly. of that locked on Pac-12 or locked on Big Ten. That's that's right here. Only we right here. Cody Stovall. Jeez, getting it on, too. Uh, for all those who listen today <laughs> and all the hosts that joined us, thank you very much. We like to keep these as concise as we can and give you all the Big 12 that we can every single Thursday. Follow and subscribe to your favorite Big 12 podcast with Locked On Big 12 Network. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. And don't forget, I'll have you covered on the entire conference every day with Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. This has been, and it always will be, Locked On. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. The Dose Grande Squad.